um, it's a special day for many reasons. And I myself was inspired by a sikh I watched from the Rebbe, uh, broadcasted on Chabad.org, a piece of bringing in with the Rebbe, when the Rebbe talked about the Ketchila River and Sukkot, and now all the yonim of Sukkot should be in the way of Milkatchila River. And the Rebbe talked that uh, the Rebbe talked back then that uh, he should that a person should do the the, the shlichus of Sukkot to bring the joy of Sukkot in a way of Milkatchila River to every Jew with his rich that every Jew that we know of, even if we just heard of, we know of, it's our responsibility to bring the simcha of sukkah, the joy of sukkah in a way of a katechila riba to them. So I was uh, very inspired by that. And that year I decided after I watched the Fabang that I'm going to visit a bunch of prisons, a bunch of state prisons around my uh, part of the state, Northwest Florida, because uh, you know I have a lot of other things here and not all the times I get a chance to visit here in the prisons, but this was something very important uh, that I was gonna do, especially under the inspiration of this sikha. And uh, when it comes to the Katkila Ribo, you know, there's no one better than Rabbi Kunin, uh, the Ashliach of Chabad of Los Angeles, uh, who demonstrates in every aspect of his life and his shlichas, the way of the Katkila Ribo. So we figured out it would be the best on a day like this. There's not no one better than Rabbi Kuni to talk to us about this in the Katkhila River, to share with us his stories of the Katkhila River, of his shlichas, and the Eros. You received from the Rebbe about this idea of the Katkhila River. So without further ado, uh, Rabbi Kuni, uh, we don't see you. L'chaim, uh, l'chaim. Thank you so much for uh, joining us this evening, for uh, sharing with us your time. L'chaim. The US of Bikunin. I think we lost Rabbi Kunin. One second, he's having some technical difficulties. He'll be right on. Tonight is a very, very special night. It's a night that takes us into the game of Tishrei, 13 days a month of Tishrei, the day of the Rebbe Marash. Rebbe Marash was the fourth generation from the founder of Chabad, al Rebbe. And as you see, I sit right in front of our Rebbe, who's always with us, who is the embodiment of all the Rebbe, of all the Rebbe, from the of till today. The Chetchila Rebbe, what does that really mean? And Yiddish means, to start with, you jump over. But to start with, you jump over. What does that mean? A human being is walking down the road. In front of him is an We lost you there, Rekunin. We don't hear you. Conventional wisdom. Okay. You try to grovel and snuggle and go underneath the obstacle. Then when you can't go under the obstacle, 
because the foundations are too deep. You say, you know what? Let me try to jump over it. Well, the Rebbe Marash teaches us that that's, we don't go with conventional wisdom. We go with a very special power, with the knowledge. God does not put in front of a human being or on his shoulders something more than the human being can carry. He doesn't. So why did God put a wall right in front of you? At the wall, we are all servicing now, which we are seeing in front of us with this horrific plague and all of this. Only to teach us how to jump over. So the Ramah says, in Yiddish, like a bank is first out, Kenneth came right there. Conventional with the oil of Mashna Halamza, because Kill proof me, I wrote them, but Kenneth said, I wrote them, you don't get my Ariba. And he's wrong, you look at Kill Ariba. He's wrong, fly over the obstacles. So that's what tonight's gathering together is to strengthen ourselves, one with the other, to strengthen our belief to strengthen our incredible rock solid bitachon. Bitachon is more than just belief. It's mm. knowledge. It's going to be. Not it's going to be. That's our knowledge. That's our knowledge. So when Deb sent us to California in 1965, everybody thought it was a joke. Huh. They sent them to California. I was 25, my wife was 17. So they went to Forest Lamer, other me and my Malaya. Said, go west. We went west. Because Khilari there, jump over the obstacles. So conventional wisdom is you huddle down in an apartment and you try to find some way to do something. Oh yeah, yeah, what can we do? Well, that's not what we did. The first Shabbos, we were in Los Angeles. We went to talk to our Pinchas Gumers, or Dan Gizunt, from Young Israel, in the corner of Spalding and Melrose. And we said, we want to use this building to be able to have a Shabbos party. Of course, please. Gave out notes to public schools. Candies, songs, stories. And that first Shabbos, we had an incredible time. My wife had the girls upstairs in the women's section. I had the boys down below. That's how the first week we went to the Chalai Then came all the attacks. That's what happened. What did you do? I actually called up. What happened? Mixed boys and girls that we didn't. We did not. But you see, that's what the story is. We had to jump over every obstacle, one after the next, after the next, after the next. What did we do it with? We did it with that. Should be the me. We did it with that solid belief that we have an ever. And our Rebbe is with us, and we are flying over the obstacle. We could go story after story, the battle for the release time. No chance to win it. That's a special program where you get the children released from public school for one hour a week. You could teach them, free. But we were attacked again. They could still have we jumped over it, we did. Then we have to come to decide what to do. So you go to the Rebbe. That time you fly into New York, every time you flew into New York, at that time, you would be able to go to the Rebbe. Go to the Rebbe. And I wouldn't go with empty hands. There was an idea we should open up a shul, because Rabbi Tashi wanted to go to Israel. There's the Rebbe. We're sure for a few hundred dollars a month, stipend, given in Israel. The says, 
a shul is a good place. Now it's not going to support itself. One day. Then we came up with a brilliant idea, which is good even today. A swimming tomatoa. That's what we're going to do. Place was for sale on Robertson Boulevard. It's still there today for a swim school. We said we would bring the boys Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. They swim from an hour till 9. 9 we teach them till 10. Then 10.30, the girls come with girl counselors. Same thing, swimming and learning. Great idea. And then Emma says, What are people going to say? It paid for itself. We showed them in the papers. What are people going to say? A young man came to Los Angeles. Was there a short period of time? And he bought a building for $100,000. Ah! Two down. Remember, even though he gave you an answer which made some sense from a technological point of view or financial point of view, he knew that there had something else in mind he was looking for you to do. And then it was the hippies days, baby burn, burn, baby burn, baby Hoffman and all of this, baby Hoffman and all of this, burn, baby burn. Well, we got along very well with the hippies because I was crazy with a black coat, black hat and beard, so were they. We could relate to them. That's what we did. Go to the Rebbe only after we found the building to tie it up in Mexico, which is another long story, not for tonight. We come to the Rebbe, subject to the Rebbe's approval. The Rebbe says, aha, that's it. A Chabad house, the first one on the college campus. You call them all by the same name, Chabad house. So we're then just like the Gimbal's department stores, which is a store like Make Company or some of the others that there are big chain stores. Person opens up a telephone book, looks, looks for the name Gibbles. They ever said it would be the same thing with Chabad. Put it in the Chabad house. And that's what happened, actually. The Chetzal either. The first Kabat House in the world across the street from UCLA. Bought with miracle money. Not alone, not much to tell the whole story tonight. We gave them the key. It's the next one that happened is it went, as the Emma said, it'll go from the west to the north, which was Berkeley, from the north to the south which was the ego, and then it was finally to the east where we really need it. That was the Chetzalah Rima. There was no precedent, you understand? How do you go to a college campus, get a house? What? How is it going to support itself? What are you going to do? No, we have a Rebbe. And Rebbe says, go, do it. And we did. And that's how our story of the Chetzalah Rima began on the West Coast. No sense. No rhyme, no reason, just web. That's what the river wants. And it's the same river today who continues to lead us like a tchila river, una river, which we'll talk about that later in Sabrina tonight. And our river is always with us. So let's say the Chaim, and then we'll sing the tchila river. Let's do that. Chaim, Chaim, Chaim. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I have the I
my dear viewers, that song speaks for itself. You just listen, just listen to the way it goes. Never ending. Again and again and again. Because that's the power. That is the power, you understand? That is the power. Power of song to take us over the obstacles. So as we are into the day, then a marash, which is day, is a day of light, the day of his physical passing. We say, as the Rebbe teaches us, Give a seba to the Rebbe Marash. Give over all the problems. Get over, give over all the insurmountable obstacles. Just give it over to the Rebbe Marash. And say, Rebbe Marash, Rebbe Marash, you gave us the credo of going forward with the great obstacles that we are going through, everything else. Rebbe Marash. Rebbe, Rebbe Marash. Rebbe Marash. Help us in these 25 hours to overcome all of this. When you look at the obstacles that we are going through now, we don't Yom Kippur outside, right, because of the plague. Everybody said you're not going to be able to, it's going to be too hot. It wasn't too hot. We don't outside. We had to think of a proper plan. We're confronted with everything that's going on here. Either we could have curled up like everybody else did, curled up like this, to say, too bad. We're closed. Chabad is closed. No, Chabad is open. And we did everything right. Masks, social distancing, etc., etc., etc. et cetera. And so across the whole West Coast, tens of thousands of people, more even than that. Like a trillar even. My daughter, Rebsekhani Hat, and uh, my son in law, our older son in law, Rabbi Hat, Baruch Hat, so Zang is old. And Brent was right. How do you get the word out there? This is what like a even means. How do you get the word out there? Come and participate in our service. Good. So in the backyard, you have social distancing and stuff like that. But it comes to Nila. The gates of heaven are closing. How do you do this? So they come up with the idea. What's the idea? We have a balcony and the Kamaras there, which Lachaim Lachaim will forever be. The Rebbe's Kabbalah to Mashiach comes with a wonderful mikveh in it. Because you build a mikveh, you have no money. Build it nicer and better and better and nicer. Chaim, chaim. So, Rabbi Hecht went out for an Eli, the closing ceremony, after publicizing it, well in advance with all the social media, that the parking lot of Vincenti Foods People can gather with special distancing and masks and participate in the Neil Ashar. And there, hundreds of people, hundreds of people were screaming together, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Echod, crying, tears coming down their faces. That's That's what it means when you send out food packages to thousands of people, leave it on the door, blowing chauffeurs, street corners, etc., etc., etc. That's the Don't let yourself be taken down and you feel that the world is coming against you, coming against you, going to try to destroy you, try to take you down. What do you do? First, bang! 
I'll teach you a lesson. Bang, Mr. Darkness. Bang, Mr. Evil. Bang, I'm going to teach you a lesson. Woof. I am flying over the obstacles. Chabad across the world has gained hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of followers doing this horrific darkness. What did we do? The Katril Arimeh. In the darkness, we said, darkness, darkness, you can't take down our light. Our light is the light of Hashem. Our light says something on the screen. Our light is the light of Hashem. Our light is brought to us by our Moshe Rabbeinu, our Nebbe. The Katrilla Nebbe. And then here, on the West Coast, we had a very special bracha. Because you've got to remember. Come up with an idea. Let's make him over sukkah. Sukkah and wheels never was done before. Okay. I had no money. So what do you do? You give a look. You see a small trailer, probably 12 feet long, flat bed, with two signs on it. I said, huh, you can easily take open up the signs, you have walls, you can have a sukkah. Walk in, triple A flag and banner to wonderful Howard first. Say, Howard, hi, I had met him before. I need you to donate the trailer to me. So I'm not using it, it's yours. But then what do you do? Before you ask the rebel, gotta call Rabbi Dworkin, ask a rebel. So kind of trailer, what do you do? He says, Shlemala. That's what you would call me, a wonderful man. Says in the Gemara, Sukkah's on Gami Agola. A sukkah that's on top of a wagon, it's kosher. What you have to do is when you park it, you have to re, re spread around the palm trees. So it becomes a, a, a sukkah that's a real, down to earth, solid sukkah. That was the first sukkah in the world, the Chetchalari. And on and on and on. That's what it means. And the Rebbe's incredible, incredible blessings to us gave us another incredible blessing. Over and over. When did that happen? So the Rebbe went to new institutions. And Kiragil, as usual, we were broke. But we're not going to let this stop to do what I had once, which will tell you some more stories later. No, we're not going to do that. So, get in touch with our Mackish Lukims. Get in touch with our Mackish Lukim. The United States are ready to travel from place to place. And when we do that, we have them go and we have them look. I have them look at the what it called, at the neighborhood in the empire. I we like the Rebbe. But what do I usually do? When things get very rough, I open another Chabad house. That's how we ended up with hundreds of Chabadas. It's been a very, very rough time since 1965, today. A lifetime. That's what it is. That's what you have to understand. Very, very rough time. So then they rise back to the which means where here you are trying to fly over the obstacle and you're not quite making it. So it says to go over and over. It's a self, a special, special power to fly over obstacles. That's what it is. A special power to fly over obstacles. The biggest obstacle we have today, the biggest obstacle we have today is the obstacle of the ghost. The biggest obstacle we have today is the obstacle of the ghost, of the exile. The bit of exile. 30 years since the Rebbe's physical passing. 70 years of celebrating the Rebbe's continued leadership. But his physical passing, 30 years, 
30 years. And look, with this credo, with this motto, with this screaming statement, we are going forward to fly over the obstacle. And in the days of Shiva, we want to look at Chalai, went back to Los Angeles, I said, we can't, that's what we have to be. And we went to the Chalai before Moscow. We heard about the news, flew out from Moscow Sunday morning, and we were able to make it back miraculously. Miracle, I was on the plane with the Yidden that we had in Moscow, which we had brought with us, including my, my Fratkin son, Yossi. It was an announcement. We're going to have to abort the landing in New York because the weather is coming to be bad. I said, no, 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 no. Can't do this. I ring the bell. I say to the students, I have to talk to the captain. Well, how do you talk to a captain flying the plane? They don't let you do that. I walked right past her. She said, you can't. Sat down crying outside the captain's door. And I was sobbing. She said, you know, Rabbi, what is it? I told her, I want to talk to the captain. Captain opened the door. Look at the of it. I said, it can't be. There's no way in the world. There's no way in the world that we can be in a position with not coming to New York. Captain, you follow forward. And when you follow forward, you'll see miracles. And I sat outside his door. Sure enough, within a few minutes, all the orders were completely reversed. In a few minutes, and we landed on time to go to the mikveh. And I was the last one in the Rebbe's room. And we took to the Chetchila River, to the Yohel. Took upon ourselves a vow. And Rebbe, we're never ever going to let your Mosdos fall. We never ever will. We'll open up more and more institutions, more and more. We are never going to stop, regardless what you hit us with. We are never, ever going to stop. That's the biggest Chetchila in our lives. Because where could there be such a worse obstacle? And this horrific goals. Horrific goals. We are in now. Nothing ever will stop us to fulfill the heavens marching orders. Everyone do what you can do to bring Mashiach. That's the marching orders. Action Zakhain, become very, very stubborn. Don't budge. How could you not budge in a situation like this? You have young people coming out as emissaries of the Rebbe who never physically saw the Rebbe. Never physically saw the Rebbe. That's like a Chalarimah. That's the biggest challenge we have. And you want to know something? We are never, ever going to stop. You can hit me again. And again and again. This way, that way. The more you'll hit us, the more you'll send us flying over and over the obstacles. That's what it's all about. And now we're going to say, which is a good idea. And then we introduce to you the incredible, incredible. Incredible shlichas of our Rebbe to liberate all the Rebbe's holy books, writings, personal effects from their horrific prison in Moscow. You will soon see 
as we walk by the Rebbe in the middle of this war, which continues today. And we have a Rebbe message to our Russian friends. Your horrific prison in Moscow is a horrific prison where you are imprisoning the souls of all the Rebbe's, all the generations of the Rebbe's, as the Rebbe says in his own words. That's what you are doing. You hear the screaming words of our Rebbe, screaming that the souls of all the Rebbe's, all of them, they are in prison. Watch this video. Chaim, Chaim. Where the Rebbe explains, where the Rebbe explains that the basic souls of all the Rebbe's are in the books. Their whole lives are in the books. That's what it's all about. And this battle started in a way that had no natural way to be able to understand. I was in New York, Utah, Kislev many years ago. I get a call from Jerry Weintraub. And Jerry Weintraub says, yeah. tune in, that's where I used to talk me, rest in peace, Hollywood producer, tune in. Okay. The Rebbe spoke to me last yeah, night, yeah. and I'm gonna do, yeah. Whatever he wants me to do. I said, <laughs> Mr. Weintraub, I don't talk to the Rebbe. Kuna, you'll tell him. I don't talk to the Rebbe. I have to get a message to him. You have to give me some sort of an understanding. That's what you really have to do. All right, but the Rebbe knows already. Okay, but you want me to get a message to the Rebbe, you have to give me something I can understand. And therefore, he says, I was in Malibu playing with my satellite dish. And all of a sudden, I see this, this Rebbe speaking to a gigantic crowd of people. I see the Rebbe. And when I see the Rebbe, he's talking about he who has influence. And other people don't have influence to do something very special in this world that has to be coming about, he should use the powers that he has. That's what he should be doing. <laughs> Using the powers that he has. I was there by the Fabrengen when I was to send those words. We all looked around after they ever finished that few moments of speaking. We all looked around. Who would they ever be talking about? Okay, now I know what to do. So I figured 
Hans of says, I'll do whatever I want, and he heard that I was speaking to my cat, he says, that's me. I'll talk to Rabbi Krinsky. He drives that I'm home. When Rabbi Krinsky drives that I'm home, then when he does that, he will be able to, at that point, tell the Rabbi the story. Meanwhile, it's the afternoon service, Mincha, and they was looking at me and looking at me. It was in a small shul upstairs, not a large synagogue downstairs. It was many, many years ago. Maybe 20 people, 30 people attending. Why after Mincha? Why after Mincha? Rabbi Grona comes looking for me. That's before I had a chance to talk to Rabbi Krinsky. Rabbi Grona in peace. That was personal secretary, passed away not long ago. I mean, they were going to have it for a full and complete union of his neshama up above, etc., etc., etc. And all of this is involved with one thing. This is involved with belief. So he says, that is calling you. But don't go the regular way. Take the wooden, take the elevator up to the third floor. Take the wooden steps down, just between you and the river. It's off. Hello. Yeah, it's, it's, it's off. Yeah, it just died. I'm doing. What's Bobby's email address? Just here. I have to switch it. It's. Uh... Hang on, uh... We hear you. We're gonna lose our recording for just a few. Uh, seconds, a few moments, he's just changing from his phone to uh, to a different, different, uh, different equipment. So just be patient. Uh, he'll be back on in just a moment. Meanwhile, we'll put on uh, he's back. One second. Yeah, we can hear you. to come, uh, I was curious for bringing about the idea of like a Tchila river, and I was showing earlier the, um, you know, the Rebbe Sicha, and the Rebbe talked about 
Prisukas sicha the Rebbe talks in a in Chabad at all. Prisukas Fabringen under under Fabringens under the Fabringen series. The Rebbe was talking about how uh, you have to apply the idea of a Katchila river and how it's connected to Sukas. And the Rebbe says the idea is to bring the Simcha of Sukas, you know, to everyone uh, that is out there, that everybody with everyone within within our reach and. I was said, I think even using, using the words that everybody that we know of that should be, you know, we should uh, make sure to bring the simcha of, uh, of sukkahs to them as well. So uh, uh, last year, we went to visit many prisons and was able to actually see how it is that, you know, that uh, we're literally able to bring the simcha to, to, to people, you know, when there's, there's many ways that each and every one of us could do it, especially now. In this time, while many people are at home or in quarantine, that even just picking up the phone and calling people and asking uh, them how they're doing, that itself could bring a lot of simcha to people. There's many ways that we was talking about that you don't have to stop our shlichas now, you know, just because uh, we have limitations. But that Mif Tzalula, so this year, for example, you know, there are, we are here on campus. And you know, typically there are a lot of people on campus uh, that are going to classes, and we shake a little over the hundreds and hundreds of students. So this year, there are although the students are back in town, but uh, I mean, just they're back here, but the classes are still online. Most classes are online, so there are not too many people on campus itself where the classes are taking place. So we're planning to do what I couldn't mention earlier: circumambulance. We're planning a circumambulance to go around different places to meet people, to meet students in their places. So there are many ways that I was talking about bringing the Simcha people, the Rebbe Maharash, uh, his aim was to helping people, the Gashmius of Beruchnius, you know, to help them to keep Yiddishkeit, to be able to still keep their, uh, you know, keep keep what they're, what, what they're doing, keep Yiddishkeit. It was challenging to, to keep Yiddishkeit back then. Beruchnius and Begashmius, the Rebbe Maharash was about helping, helping them. And uh, so this year also, you know, while I was uh, starting to watch this Fabringen, uh, I was thinking about what the Rebbe says. So we, are, we are got in contact right away, got in contact here with the Department of Corrections. And we are in the capital as well. So we have connection here with the state agencies in the governor's office. And uh, when I met with the Secretary of the Department of Corrections, there was no, you know, there was no way to for you know the inmates in the prison to be able to get visits. And after I watched Sicha, you know, I realized that if it's if I have a connection to it, if I wish to it, I need to be able to do it. The Rebbe says in Katchila River. So right away I contacted the you know the the the, the secretary of the department and started making a bunch of phone calls and we're working very heavily along with the Aleph Institutes to make sure that Jewish inmates can still get visits uh, by Shluchim in different prisons throughout the state of Florida, uh, even uh, even under this uh, uh, challenge of COVID and restriction and limitation, the places where we could, you know, that uh, we make, the, the, they're working on making special exceptions so we could go and bring the Simcha of Sukkot there as well. Uh, it takes a lot of work and a lot of efforts and a lot of energy. And Baruch Hashem, we have lots of other areas of Shluchim that we're working on. But because the Rebbe, and I was thinking about it today, and I was telling my children, this is Mamish what it says, uh, that we're saying the Rebbe's, uh, you know, that the, the, the Rebbe is alive, you know, uh, so many years after Gimel Thomas, and, and, and the fact that we are able to listen to the Rebbe Sichas, to watch the Rebbe Sichas, we're able to, you know, to see uh, the Rebbe and feel that the Rebbe is talking to us, not something the Rebbe was talking about 30, 40 years ago, but it's talking to us today. And to take this and implement this, that's Mamish, the idea of Mazari uh, Bachaim Bafu Bachaim. And that's the idea of doing things in the Eifem Pelakat Chila River, because, you know, picking up the phone and start, starting uh, making phone calls a few days before Sikhus to make this possible. You know, even when I was talking to Rabbi uh, Mendy Katz, my Institute, he himself didn't think it's, you know, the Shaykh to do. And there was some 
challenges and obstacles and you're working on going through all of them. And this is all because the, the, the inspiration that I have to share with us. There's another famous story, I think, going with Rabbi Katz, or I don't remember if that's the name, from South Africa, who once came to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe told he was an Yechidus, and the Rebbe asked him, was, I think it was a few days before Hanukkah, and the Rebbe asked him to uh, reach out, right now, to, to, to reach out to the person in charge in prisons, make sure that he didn't light Hanukkah candles in, you know, he, you know, in prisons. And it was a very late night there, and, and the guy, uh, you know, he made he went and make a phone call to the guy in the middle of the night, and because the guy figure is, you know, he called him so late, so late in the middle of the night in his house, it's, it's, it's you know, it's not, it must be something so important. And they were able to 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 allow uh, Jewish inmates to uh, you know to light um, Hanukkah candles, and then he asked uh, the Rebbe told him that here in New York there's a problem with that, and he asked him to help here and along with Rabbi Hef, they were working in it and were able to accomplish this. This is, you know, Ashreinu Matev Chalkeinu, that, you know, that the Rebbe is uh, pushing us. And, you know, in an apron for the Katechila Ariba to do things, uh, you know, even that we, uh, you know, unheard of in other places and other areas. And now, you know, we have, all we have to do is to tune in to the Rebbe's Sifas, the Rebbe's videos to watch the Rebbe and and see how the Rebbe is talking to us today and get you know get Pasha Teiros in our life how to run our life uh, cyber Gashmius and cyber Ruchius you know that what to do what to do in our shlichus and each one in their own areas you know we all face with the uh, challenges in our life and the way to deal with these challenges you know I was brought up as a child and my father was a shlich as well. Uh, to deal with it in a way of the Katechila Ariba. The way of the Katechila Ariba means that, you know, there is a, you know, that, that, that you make things that seemingly impossible and you go about them in a way that you go out of, you go out of your limits. You don't think if it's Shaykh, Vedech Teva. Once we try to bring the Ebeshter, to put the Ebeshter into a certain frame of Teva, that's not the Katechila Ariba. Chil Ariber is not considering the limitations of Teva and knowing that my Metzias, my existence as a Yid, Bechlau, today, whatever I am, as a Shliach, as, as a Yid, you know, doing what I need to be doing, what the Ebeshta wants for me to do, it's not B'derech Teva, it doesn't have an existence B'derech Teva. The problem begins when we, when we think that, that our Metzias, whether it's our Pranasa, it comes to us B'derech HaTeva, or whatever it is, the Rabochas comes to us B'derech HaTeva, then problems begin. Once we realize that, you know, it doesn't come B'derech HaTeva, that it's the Ma'an B'derech HaTeva, you know, then we could go in a way of the Katechila Ariba, jumping over the limitations, not, not, not being so concerned with, with, with what is standing in our ways, because we know we're not going with our own Koiches. And I remember, that uh, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, the way for the people that are joining now, we're waiting for Rabbi Kuni to come back on. Uh, about a year ago, we were down in South Florida. Our shlichus is in Dalhousie, which is uh, about seven, eight hours drive from Miami. And last summer, we went down to South Florida and we were driving every Shabbos back up to to Tallahassee, we needed to go there for Chinuch reason, put our kids there in camp. And we were, we were concerned and not sure what we we're gonna do the following year, I mean, this past year, uh, with Chinuch for our children. It was, it was a lot of uh, challenging because the online school didn't work for some of our kids and we didn't know what to do. So, my, so I was talking with my wife, oh, my wife said, you know, if, you know, the Sam Shluchim, we were talking about the Sam Shluchim, what they're doing is that the, the, the husband goes sometimes, like they move to a place with the Shina for kids, and then they travel back and forth. And I told my wife, back then we, we, we started joining a, a group to learn Amr the day of, uh, of, of Sichas Kedesh from the Rebbe and um, Teres Menachem. And the Rebbe is talking there about uh, the, the Fidik Rebbe, you know, we go, in, we go with these kaychas 
And we sometimes find ourselves in a challenging situation that where we can't, naturally, we cannot accomplish what we need to accomplish. What we have to do is just, you know, say, say capital till him and realize that it's not about, you know, that it's not about us. It's about the Eberstad. I had a student yesterday come over to see me. I haven't seen him for like maybe a year or two. He used to come, he used to be very involved. And he says to me, uh, Rabbi, can I come over and, and, and see you? And it's funny because the way the Rebbe taught us, the Rebbe trained us, that doesn't make a difference. A guy cannot come for a year, year and a half when, I, when, when, when someone can yid come and he yid needs something from you, whether you're a shliach, whether you are, every yid is a shliach. You know, so somebody, you know, that somebody needs help from you, uh, or even begashmius, that you move everything aside, you don't tell him no, you don't tell him I'll see you in a week or two weeks because he hasn't come around or he hasn't come and you ask him to come. You have to make yourself available you know, to help another year. That's what Baal Shem Tov taught us. And it's what the Rebbe taught us, the Rebbeim taught us. So I thought, of course, yeah, I was busy with so many things when I had a circuit, but I said, you need help, you know, let him come. And, and he came here and he told me about all type of stresses that he's going through in his life. And, and he was unfortunately uh, going in foster care. He was put in foster care when he was younger. And, and the foster care, you know, they, they, they it's just a, it's a, a Jewish program. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's, 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 foster care put him through this Jewish program called JAFCO in South Florida. And, and they helped him out. He was basically raised uh, there. And for many years, he lived there. And they put him through college. And up to age 23, they give him, they give him funds every month and they support him. He was telling me how it's coming up to 23 and his funds are going to stop and he have to start caring for himself and all these other things that he had going on in his life, uh, all the stresses. And he said, he said, Rabbi, I feel overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. It's so challenging. It's so stressful. It's like it was literally, you know, a tears in his eyes. And, and uh, we spoke and I told him, listen, that the problem begins when we start thinking that you know, it's we, we care about ourselves, and we need to care. We need to say, you look back and look back at all the challenging situations you had in life, all the challenging points that you had in your life and every corner and every intersection, the Ebershter was there for you, helped you. So if you sit down and write down these things that, and realize that it's all the Ebershter's brachas, it's not about you, then moving forward, you could also think about it the same way. And if the Ebershter helped you and brought you uh, until now, you know, there's no reason why the Ebershter should not be able to move to bring you forward. And I told them that the problem is that you're thinking that, you know, that it's about you and you're trying to make it work. But, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, you know, it, 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 then you get start to get stressed. But if you realize it's about the Ebershter and it's not about you, and you won't be stressed. So I told my wife, listen, you're the Rebbe's shluchim. You know, we, all we try to do is to do the Rebbe's, the Rebbe's war. And it's the Ma'am Medecha Teva. It's not about Decha Teva. And, you know, all we have to do is like the, like the Rebbe said, that's Sikha, that when you come to a situation that you see that the Decha Teva, you know, naturally find no way for help. Naturally, there's no, there's no, uh, you don't find how you're going to get your brachas, how you're going to get dechateva. There's no place for that. Then you have to do what I said. You have to say a bit of dilim and realize it's in the Eibushter's hands. As I was telling these students too, you know, what the, when you come to the situation in life, when we when you face situation in life, when you know you don't know how you're going to do it, this is the best because this is off a shoe. You know that it's in the hand of the Eibushter. And no one is in control other than the Hebrew and then the Hebrew is going to take care of you, just like you took care of you until now. So I told this to my wife, and I wrote a letter to the rabbi that night, very late at night, and told the rabbi, and my wife and I were talking about the only way that we could, uh, you know, that we could continue our shlichas here is if we find uh, girls, you know, that could come and help. But to find, you know, girls to come and help in a place like Tawahasi, it's not South Florida, it's not. 
Los Angeles is not a very popular place. It's, it's hard to get uh, there's no like social life here for for uh, you know girls to come and looking to do anything else other than shlichas. Uh, but they told my wife, listen, that's you know we have to put our our our, our mind that we want to be what the Rebbe wants us to be. And if you want to be what the Rebbe wants us to be, the Ebrish that wants us to be, then we're going to be there. We're going to be able to be there and live it in the Ebrish to end and say capital till him. I wrote a letter to the Rebbe the night. And the next day, my wife tells me, listen, you know, it was like two o'clock in the morning. I'm, you know, I wrote the letter to the Rebbe and I went to sleep. In the morning, my wife told me, guess what? I got a, I got a, a respond to a message she put on an ad she put like a couple of years ago and we were looking for girls and someone someone responded and they wanted to come and then they, they also happened to be they come from Israel but they happen to be Americans too so there's no problem with them coming coming here and everything was going to work out things work out best you know, when you're going away from the Katkhila Ariba and you want to do what Eberster wants, you know that this is what Eberster wants you to do. And, and you put your mind there and you know that you're going to do it and you're going to get it done. It's not a question. I think that's what Katkhila Ariba is. It's not a question whether you're going to get it done or not. It's definitely going to get done. The question is how it's going to get done. Not whether it's going to get done, but how it's going to get done. And that's what the Fila Riba. Fila Riba is that you know it's going to get done. The question is just how. I want to put this on the screen. So wait for our queen to come back on because there's a problem there with the network. Uh, I want to put this piece from the Rebbe. I'll show with you this piece from the Rebbe. The Rebbe talks about this idea of like a Fila Riba, especially with regards to Sukkot is coming up. One second. And this is from Chabad.org. You guys uh, see my screen? Oh, hey, we got the Bakuni back on. Stopping sharing the screen. We got the Bakuni back on. Hold on one second. Have a clean. You have to unmute yourself. Okay. We are happy okay, to be back. That's what the Khatkhila Ariba is. Right? I want to sit down for a with you on a very, very special day and all of this, right? And then the HR comes and says, I'll teach you a lesson. You're not going to be able to continue to Fabreng. But we have a wonderful Shliach and Flower in meanwhile that picked up the Fabreng, right? I had to pick it up. I wasn't planning on <laughs> <laughs> So in any case, it's going back to the story we were talking about. Let's say L'chaim, come on. That's what we got to do. L'chaim, L'chaim, L'chaim. L'chaim, L'chaim, L'chaim. So now, Jay Weintraub was called. He was a big Hollywood producer. I think we lost it here also today. No, you didn't. Yeah. We didn't? Yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't. I told him to But be there as it may. Uh, he was a gigantic Hollywood producer. And uh, there were calls. Go up to take the city. He only had to the phone, come down the wooden stairs, but there was room. And there were looks. No information has been transmitted to David. Online chat was going to be later with Rabbi Krinsky. Rabbi looks and says, How's that good to fight? This is 1982. Is that right, Phil? 1982? Yeah. 1982. That's what it is. 1982. So the Rabbi says, How's that good to fight? You have a good friend. His name is Jerry Weintraub. He has a good friend. His name is Dr. Ahmed Hammer. Things in Russia are changing. Things in Russia are changing. 
like 1982, way before anything. And the Rebbe continues. Unser Svarim, our writings. The Rebbe's books, they're still in existence. They were not burned, as other claim that they were. And Mr. Weintraub has a good friend, his name is Dr. Ahmed Hammond, who was on both sides of the game, as we used to, please, used to call it years ago. Both sides of it. Do a lot of business with the communists. And he should talk to Dr. Hammer. And Dr. Hammer will then help get our books back. Then the Rebbe says, here's $18 for you, eat me. Here's $18 for Weintraub. He should have a full and complete recovery. Okay. What well, I do the first thing is I run out the door, off to the airport, out to the TWA, land in Los Angeles, I had to get to Weintraub. This is called Beverly Hills, my castle. Servant picks up, he's not here. Call Malibu. The servant picks up, not here. Call the desert. No, he's not here. Go to see a good mutual friend. Georgie Kanye, rest in peace. He says, yeah. I shouldn't tell you this, but I'm going to tell you because you're his rabbi. Jerry had the hiatal in here. When he was up in the towers, he was flown back with private plane. It's a life-threatening thing. And he's going to be taken to see his hospital, but you'll never find him there because he doesn't come in on his own name. So I'll find him there. I'll find him. Okay. Go to the hospital, walk into the emergency room. Where would they take him? Would be first the emergency room. That's where they would check him soon. Met a Russian nurse. I'm moved right by a student. This is Zayn Gesund, Naftali, the head of the Russian program. And she said, I said to a person who was brought in with Iedel hernia. So she says, this is, this is the person, let me check. He's coming out of recovery now. That's what he's doing. He's coming out of recovery. Okay. Jump into the elevator, get up to the top of floor. They're wheeling him out from recovery. He opens his eyes. Turn in. Give me a rabbi's money. You understand this. Open, reveal, miracle. And that's how this whole battle to bring the sheikh, because as you see in the later videos, Come with the books, together with Mashiach. It's a fight for justice. <clears throat> so then I gave him his money, felt better. He arranges a Friday night at his home, more brand new dishes that he had to be kosher, together with Dr. Hammer. And in a quiet moment, pulled us over to a private room. I told Dr. Hammond the story. He says, ha, whatever I want from the Russians, I can get. Are you kidding? No, no, no. This is not a problem. If I want a list of refuseniks, those that were not allowed to leave Russia, I take it with me, the list. I come, submit to the proper people, meaning the boss, obviously. I get him. If I want something to the Hermitage Museum, a golden menorah, they bring it to my plane. I can get whatever I want. That was 1982. That's when the war to liberate the Abbas holy books was started. And we have the source, incredible merit, as the Abba says in the last Hei Tei Besichim, the Abba talks about the Sfarim, 
and the holy books. They have to be in some assembly, nowhere else. We were told by David not to make a library in Moscow because they will find a reason to hold the books. That's what it is. So you have to understand that this is something that's been an ongoing war. And you want to know something? At night of the Chetchel Ariba, we are going to win. You're going to see through another video about our trip to Russia, about what went on when we went forward with all of this, which took us years and years and years. My Rebbe said, I don't mean it, but I don't she should be well, healthy and happy, full and complete and full of slamer. Home, alone for three years with all the little kinder of Kenan Holmes. L'chaim, l'chaim, l'chaim. We passed everything in the Congress. We fought them in Russia. Look at this video, you'll see. L'chaim, l'chaim. which had been in the airport all night, felt like a freezer. But coal is not our only problem. During the whole trip, we had to carry with us stores of food because we keep kosher. Petersburg is ahead, the city where Hasidim always suffered. The Alter Rebbe, Rabbi Schneer Zalman, the founder of Chabad, was jailed to Petropavlovka. In Spalerka, the previous Rebbe, Yosef Itzhak Schneerson, was condemned to death. But neither Tsarist oppression nor the Bolshevik terror were able to destroy Hasidism, which survives till today, thank God. Now we look forward to coming to Petersburg, the former Leningrad to celebrate Hanukkah openly in the new found freedom. So, you understand? That's like a Tchalar Ribbe. When they ever sent us there, which you're going to see later some more videos. Because after many years, Dr. Hammer tried, many, many years, from at least five years, he was getting no place. Getting no place. Telling him stories, this, that, that, this, that, this. That. So then I asked the Rebbe, maybe we should go to Russia with Dr. Hammer and push this thing along to make it happen. And that was in the year of Tismach. Five years after the beginning of this war. And Sending passports, we went, those years you couldn't just fly into Russia. You had to have protection, you had to have special protection to get in. So we all flew as Dr. Hammer's guests. That's how we flew, as Dr. Hammer's guests. Shab, wonderful got in. We landed in Moscow, stayed in the Interfax Hotel. This was myself. This was Rabbi Levin, the head Chabad librarian, Rabbi Nissen Mundell, who spoke Russian, the other secretary who spoke Russian fluently. It was incredible. Before we left on this trip, which was the beginning of this incredible war to really make this happen, fine, to make it happen. Because look at Tchilarebe, we're going to make it happen. 
everybody who's listening, be aware. When you get a call from Moscow, come get your books, please. Just take them, just take them. That's how it's gonna end. So before we left, it was the day of Chav Tavis, the day of the Rambams, my manager's day of light, it was the day of his passing. The Rebbe calls us three times that day. We were seen by the Rebbe. Once by Dallas with special blessings in the morning, once before the Rebbe went to the resting place, to the oil of the previous Rebbe. One more time. Then we came back all early from the Yoha. I led the services. I died for the Yomit. Because I was saying Kaddish for my father. Then we were called to the Rebbe's room. And the Rebbe said, since you are leaving on this day of Chav Tavis, 20 days of the month of Tavis, the Rambam is traveling with you. And since Kavdala Tavis, which is a few days later, is that the Rebbe's day, time of Chabad, he is going with you. And we turned to the Rebbe and I said, since the Rebbe is the one who is sending us. Since it's the Rebbe who's sending us, so the Rebbe for sure is going with us. And the Rebbe said, Amen. Oh, That's how this whole thing started. That's how it started. This was a battle. Whoever could dream, this would turn out to be a battle of the Ketrilla River, where we went through. And We searched and found the Rebbe's collection. Within a day after we had arrived, it was the Chetzal Arima. Dr. Hamas is meeting with the Minister of Culture. It was like a kingdom in Russia, in his palace. I'm meeting with the Minister of Culture. And I want you to come to the meeting, only me. Okay, you come to the meeting. And I take things like the Chilai River very, very seriously. And here I am. I'm seated in the waiting room. Barbara Walters, the great television celebrity newscaster, was there with Dr. Hammer. And I'm sitting there. Knowing this is the chance, I started to sing. The Alter Rebbe's name. The Rebbe says the Alter Rebbe found the Chabad's brothers, as the Rebbe is of my manatees. We got to bring down their presence with the song. I started to sing. Tears coming down my face. And then, after 10, 15 minutes, the top of my shoulder, Rabbi, Dr. Ham is waiting for you with the Minister of Culture. Go like this, walk in, and I had a list of 12 books that Rabbi Levin had given me in very, very diverse, swarm, very different types. If all of this would be found in one place, it only would have to be in the in the, in, the, in our books. So you come in, Dr. Ham was standing there, they had a a uh, guard with a submachine gun standing next to Mr. Minister Zakharov. And Dr. Ham starts to talk, explaining in Russian to the Minister of Culture. Minister of Culture answers him. We have looked, or he translates, we have looked all over. Your books do not exist. They were burnt as many other things were burnt. 
They don't know how to exist. I realized this was the moment. The control are able. Jump over the obstacle. What am I supposed to do? What? I have a Rebbe. He's with us. The Rambam is with us. The Alta Rebbe is with us. Jump. I lunged at him. And I put my hand on his heart. I said, his heart, son. My heart speaks to your heart. That's what it is. My heart speaks to your heart. Please find me these books. Crying. They were shocked. They stepped back. So I kind of gave a scream, ah, something in Russian. Find me these books. We're jumping over the Katrina, but you don't do that in Russia. You don't do it in America either. When it's an armed guard to lunge at someone he's guarding. But that's the Khatrila because that's the only way you can do it. If you have no place else to go, the wall is there. Jump over it. That's what it is. Just jump over it. That's what it is. The next morning, the Khatrila We get a call from the Amma's office, go to the library. Come to the library. The librarian comes out with a rickety cart. It says, look, these are the books that you're talking about. The 12 books. These are the books. I opened it up. It had a note. It was an Abu Dhan. had a note. There's a safer shaykh that this safer belongs to. And we the son of the Rebbe. We knew it was it. We looked at the books, we kissed the books. We go out of the library to go to Hammer's office. She had a beautiful office in Moscow. Actually, we went to the hotel, we called the office. I was singing, the streets of Moscow, da 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 till our transportation came. Nissan Mandela started to scream, Cornyan, this is not California. This is not California. Dr. Mr. Malik, you're a king there. This is Moscow. You can't do this. I, 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 but the librarian told us right away. It says it's Polyakov. It doesn't say snakes. Ah, we were still in the library, backing up now. And I never went to look at the catalog of the Polyakov books. That's a hard books, 12,000 books. We found the books. We did it, right? And from there, from there, we were told to go look all over Russia to see if any books were in any of the other cities. Very long story. We could sit here all night with all the Lechatchel and Rebbe stories. But we went from place to place. We got into Rabbi Levi Yitzchak, the Rebbe's father, to the synagogue, looked for books and nothing there. We looked from place to place to place to place. Then, come back to Moscow. We've been there. Rabbi Mendel couldn't handle it. After a short period of time, he went back. And myself and Rabbi Lenin, we were there. Till I get a call from Rabbi Gruner. May you rest in peace. The Rebbe wants you to come home. This is just about a month from the time that we landed in Moscow. I said, I've taken a vow. I can't do that. I've taken a vow not to leave Russia without the books. It's quiet. The Rebbe comes back across the extension and sends a message that I should go to a rabbinical court in Marina Russia, get three Jews together, nullify the vow and come back. 
And David didn't rest till he knew when I was coming. I came back after Shabbos, right before the physical passing of the Abba Zechariah Mushka. When I came back, David gave me a full military salute in the shul. David stayed the Mincha afternoon services. Full military salute. We found the books. We flew over the obstacles. But that was just the beginning, you see. That was just the beginning. And from there, the war went further, further, and further. And what happened afterwards? We went. Now you have to understand. Now, we are told, oh, how do we know that the United States government was giving billions of dollars to Russia? How do we know that, in fact, the United States government wants this? Got a hold of Senator Kennedy. He sent a letter. All of this. Gorbachev, all of this. Jerry Weintraub, Hammer, pushing Gorbachev, promises after promises after promises after promises. Nothing. Nothing. But you see, conventional wisdom is, hey, the wall is just too tall. What do you want? So you know what you do afterwards? You get the United States government involved. Right? It's even recorded in the publicized records of discussion between Gorbachev and our president. Give back the books. President to president, don't you understand what that means? President Bush Sr.? Gorbachev, don't you understand what that means? That's like a but who could do that? These are books. Very holy, as you saw before the souls of all that are being in it. But how do you get the two most powerful people in the world to talk about the books? Give them back, by the way, give them back the books. All of that didn't help. All of that didn't help. And then I come back, fast forwarding years after the original discussion we're talking about now, come back to Russia, together with Rabbi Aronov, Suzanne Gizron, Rabbi Kogan, Rabbi Levin, myself, to continue the battle for the books. Then, continue the battle. And all of a sudden, I have to come back for the wedding of my son, Rabbi Menachem Mendel. God bless him. And with Kishengel, I have to come back. I have to come back days before the wedding, before Chayel. Go like that, Prochus. And the Rebbe says, no, till the wedding, says to that site. Till the wedding, there's still time. Literally, literally days. The Rebbe says, go, go. Of course, with great happiness. That's what happens. Got some food parcels we used to bring. We took back a shul with the Chatzchila Ariba, where the Chabad rabbi in the Polyak of Shul, Bashai Baroni Yadom Sheis, was killed uh, by the communists, couldn't make it to the tunnel that the Polyak brothers built, this beautiful shul near the Kremlin, with an escape hatch just for something like this. Took it back, 
incredible stories we could sit here for a week. Look at Khalarib. With our fists, we took it back after 13 different times with the Russians. We got every commission commission, 13 different commissions to sign off they can come back to us. The little old lady that always was a witch in the Russian buildings saying, not gonna happen. Paid off the chief of police is a long story. Fist fight, we took, took it over. Now we had that shul, which today is a beautiful, beautiful shul in the center of Moscow. Big, beautiful building built right above this historic building. So whatever the case is, Debus has come back. Now we land in Germany because you couldn't there were no direct flights to take in. And right away, right away, by the plane, the journalists, coo coo, coo coo coo. I said, You coo coo. What are you telling me, coo? Coo, you don't know, no, coo. If you get into the plane, it's empty, everything's deserted. A Jewish stewardess comes over and speaks in Yiddish. Don't go back. They're going to kill you. And this goes back to what they ever told me. You'll soon see that video, the videos of us passing the Rebbe. But the Rebbe said, so smile as I say that clip of from Lenin. You should take the very essence of evil out of Lenin. He was a dollar for Lenin. You're going to see it soon in the video. He was a dollar for Lenin, which I took back. He was a dollar for Lenin. And that was how the Rebbe brought down the evil government of Gorbachev. So why don't you watch these videos and then as we walk by the Rebbe and then we will continue as the story goes forward. So you see, that's what preceded the coup. That's what preceded the coup. So, streets of Moscow, I landed at the airport, deserted. I had American dollars, which then was a little kind of meaningful to people then. Had a couple of big boxes, there was one car there. So I go over to the driver. Yeah, Khochit, Moscow, I want to go to Moscow. I'll start burning the dumb chase. He says, Zakritu, it's closed. I show him the $10 bill. I said, Moscow. He said, okay, I'll go. Because Khilarib is going to a closed city. 
come down further. We come down further and further. Now, we're getting close to the shul, which is not far from the Kremlin, right away in the eye of Moscow. But there's a guard with a submachine gun from one of these stanchions with a big concrete base. He's standing there with a submachine gun. And the driver is petrified, but look at him and fly over the obstacle. Go out right in front of him. Don't speak a word of Russian. I go like this. Please, go away. Go away from here. I take with my hands. I start rolling the stanchion out of the way. The driver was became pale. And I go like this thing. Go. He remembers I have the money yet. Goes through. The guy with the submachine is standing like this. What am I supposed to do? It's an American. I just shoot him. We come to the shoe. The shoe has tanks around it. I had the honor of performing a wedding by a young couple that should have been married in the, the large shoe, in the hip of it, which was closed. The Rebbe said, take the roots of the evil and lift them out. We then made a quick meeting what to do with the dollar, and we figured since, he, since he's in hell, we went over to his grave in the Kremlin, and we burnt the dollar there. Then we had to figure out what to do. So we knew that we're going to be getting no place. That's clear. We've been through everything with that. Hammer, Robert Maxwell, everything under the sun. It's, it's uh, hundreds of hours of discussion to explain all of this. I said, you know what? Let's go to the KGB. Everything is deserted. We go to the Zinsky Plutchett, gigantic underground KGB headquarters, the center of Moscow, with a big statue of Bruduzin in front of it, sitting on a horse. And we were caught. Come in like this. I want to see the chief. That's what we want to see. We want to see the chief. That's what we'd like to see. We'd like to see the chief. One comes out, another one comes out. Yet, yet, no, no, no. I said, it's very important. Kriki Schneider's son, books of Schneider's. No, till this big guy comes out with a submachine gun, perfect English. Better than mine. My accent is from the Bronx. This is the perfect English. You get out of here before we kill you. Ah. So we see it's not the KGB. So we might as well go to Yeltsin, who I knew when he was president of Russia, not the whole USSR. We come, there's 100,000 people. You'll see some videos on this. 100,000 people surrounding it. Drunk out of their minds. Tanks. People putting rosebuds in, in the barrels of the tanks. I said, I want to go to, to, to Yeltsin. We were the only clergymen that decided to take such a step. I had met him before, so we knew each other. Take us upstairs. I wanted to see him. I said, no, he's in his room. I said, we will sleep on this floor to give him prayers. Nobody will come and kill him. Because that's what they thought was going to happen. Massive attack, kill him, then the KGB has it. Slept on the floor all night. Turned out that the people became so strong. And when it became so strong, it was decided by the masses of people to make Yeltsin president. We sat in the first session of parliament. That's what all of this is. First session of parliament. First session of parliament. That's where we sat. Only clergymen there. 
Hyeltsin's going to go up to the porch to address the masses. As it was more, we had, we had the food, the front lines. I was there with Elie Wiesel. May his soul rest in peace. As he's coming at a big, gigantic bear's paw, hand like this. I grabbed his big paw. I said, "That I can give you some success. Give the snares and books now." He goes like this: "Boot it, boot it! It's a coming, it's coming!" Like he points at me. I have to go speak. And he got up to speak. He started to scream. Yeah, say yeah! Hundreds of thousands of people screaming. Yeah, see yeah! Russia. Who's standing next to him with his black hat? Picture of it in Time Magazine, first page, cover, standing right there. And when this man comes down, I grab his paw again. Can you give us the chance? Give us the books. Buddha Zaftara coming tomorrow. Then I knew the fight with him was just going to begin. But Mr. Yeltsin, if we were able, if we were able to get this far, the Rebbe promises us, our Rebbe, you see him right here, promises us, we're going to get those books and we're going to get them. So now, it starts up with Yeltsin. Promises, promises, we're going to do this, going to do that. He was supposed to come to America and our wonderful children, Rabbi Chaim Nochem Kunin, Rabbi Yosef Nissen Kunin, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Kunin, Rabbi Tzemach Kunin. Our son. God was is Neshama. We gave him that name. Tamar, are you sure? I was in a hospital with my wife. We named so many of our children for redemption. Gula Bracha. We have to have some movement today. Gula Bracha. And on and on. Names of redemption. Because we believe. Because we say three times a day. You will bring us back with compassion to your city of Jerusalem. The coming of Mashiach will be. Eyes will see as we come back. We believe, as the Rebbe says, Maimonides, the great Maimonides, finishes his Mishnah Torah, the great book, that inculcates within itself the entire Torah with all the laws finishes up. There shall be the time that the whole world we be completely covered with the knowledge of Hashem, of the Almighty God. Like the waters cover the bottom of the ocean. That's the mission. So now what do we do? Try this, we wait, have a dear penya, have a little bit of patience, try this, try this, try this. Finally, you know what we did? We sued them in the Russian court. We sued them in the Russian court. And the lower court, and we won. Because these books were never nationalized. We won. We fought them in their courts. All the way to the Supreme Court of Russia. The Supreme Court of Russia ruled. We are right. Give them back their books. That's all the Russian courts, remember. All with the others' advice. There was a little lady called Veronica Irina. I was said to listen to her. She was a lawyer and guided us along this path. We won in all the courts. And you know something? Mr. Yeltsin, 
This big bear paw still didn't deliver. So now he's coming to America. Uh huh. He's coming to America. What did our children do? They went to Washington, D.C. and created the historic 100th senator letter to Mr. Yeltsin. 100 senators. That's correct. And when Yeltsin came, Yeltsin came. He was presented with a very, very special book. Very special book. Present. Oh, let's love the cover. Yes, what is this? He says, you know how many senators have signed this 100? Saying you must return the books. They're getting billions of dollars from us. You must return the books. Yes, you must return the books. And we stopped the return of a small lens collection, which he was going to get when he came, till unfortunately, many years later. Well, it's the day of the Khalil So why talk? It didn't work. Now look at this video that you're going to see now. How um, Vice President Gore, then Senator Gore, addresses the United States Senate with a special amendment to the Freedom for Russia Act. No institution that is withholding the Rebbe's books can get any money from the United States government until today, of all the years, the Russian State Library never received a penny. Watch this video. Listen to our wonderful, wonderful Al Gore. Back, a casualty of Russian domestic uh, politics. A as many of you know, the Lubavitch have gone the extra mile in their efforts to recover these books, and that extra mile consists of the effort it took to submit their claim to the chaotic and often mysterious Russian court system. Nevertheless, on two occasions, courts of competent jurisdiction clearly ruled in favor uh, of the Lubavitchers' claims. Unfortunately, however, those decisions were never implemented. Officials declared flatly that they would not comply with the court's decisions. Access to the, to the location of part of the collection was blocked physically by library staff using bullhorns to whip up crowds to threaten and abuse the Lubavitchers who were seeking access. Decrees of courts were nullified by administrative measures from the Russian Ministry of Justice. The Speaker of the Russian Parliament, in a move understood to be part and parcel of his rivalry with Yeltsin, attempted a late-night late maneuver to legislate a ban against return of the books. Uh, Mr. President, these are American citizens who have a valid legal claim which has been properly adjudicated in the Russian court system. And what is blocking the implementation of the Russian legal decree is a demagogic effort to whip up anti-Semitism uh, in Russia, uh, where there is a vulnerability uh, to uh, that uh, virus. Uh, and this experience, therefore, underscores an important lesson for us as we consider the present legislation. We are encouraging American citizens, individuals, agencies of our government, and corporations to create an ever more complex pattern of relationships with their opposite numbers in Russia and the other post-Soviet states. We are also appropriating money to help that process by establishing programs of joint cooperation. Indeed, the Lieberman-Gore Amendment, which was just adopted, is only one of uh, many measures designed to do just that. It is inevitable that some American persons will find themselves damaged by their CIS partners. Uh, and that they will seek redress through the local court systems. 
we are urging the states of the former Soviet Union to adopt the principles of democracy and free markets and also the rule of law. It is equally inevitable that persons who encounter the legal system there will face a very steep uphill fight to get justice when political interference within the court system uh, evidently is a matter of course. So the amendment offered uh, here is designed as a first step uh, toward providing some limited degree of protect protection. It provides that as of the date of enactment, any American person, uh, such as uh, uh, the individuals in the Lubavitch community, uh, any American person who has won a favorable verdict against a CIS governmental body in a court of competent jurisdiction in a post-Soviet state and who can show that the court verdict is unenforceable can then ask the Secretary of State to suspend U.S. programs of cooperation with the CIS institution in question. Uh, I will... So you see, that's like the Tchilat Iman. To pass in the United States Senate an amendment, as you just saw, Al Gore explaining it, has no way. How's all of this happening? And it goes forward again. We're fighting in Russia, fighting, fighting. Fighting, fighting. Continue to fight, push, push. They can't get no money now, the library and the others from the from funds of America. And then, as the fight goes on, the question will be with Pesach. Come home for Pesach, not to come home for Pesach. Some of my associates, wives came flying in with them for Pesach. I did not think that would be the proper way for me talking about. My wife with all the little kids at home. So one of the other Robinsons calls my wife. She had a foolish name, but me and my mom Malaya. This great woman of great belief. Shalom HaKodesh is Ainical. She's talking. She, what are, your, what are your plans for Pesach? Oh, my plans? Oh, my husband's coming home for Pesach. What do you mean he's coming home for Pesach? Oh, he's coming with all the books. What does you know that we don't know? So my Emerson says with full belief, full strength, the Emerson says, come to the forum with the forum with Mashiach and says, I'm coming to the forum together with Mashiach. Mashiach is coming now. He'll be coming together with the books of Mashiach. Yeah. That's her belief. L'chaim, L'chaim, the day of L'chatchil Ha'ribe, she should have a full and complete of Shlema. L'chaim. Then the Rebbe tells me, tells me, unsolicited call, come home for Pesach, okay? At home for the first few days, you listen to whatever that tells you. Come back. Etc., etc., etc. Making a long story short, King Chavzai and other. With great belief, I need it to see the rabbit's hand. You know something, the night of Lechat Chalariba, let's just go forward with Lechat Chalariba. I flew into the Rebbe, then miraculously got the Tanya. <laughs> that Vice President Gore got from the Russians. I was able to give it to the Rebbe. Seven books came back. An Air Force One with President Clinton should have been 7,770 down to seven. 
all of this, I was able to like, tell our Rebbe, give the seven books to our Rebbe. And with this like, tell our Rebbe, we go forward with more and more strength till we will have all the Rebbe's books. Yeah, 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 yeah. All of his writings, all his personal effects. Do we get out of this bitter gullus? One more yid putting on film. One more yid in there. Or a little girl lighting Shabbos and the end of candles. One more one married woman using a mikra. More law of an ethnic. More sukkah. And all of this. Nothing will keep us down. No, we're going to go over the obstacles. So we dance with the Rebbe together in Yerushalayim, in Kodesh. Give yourself over now, my wonderful friends, to the Rebbe Marash. It's his day. He will take you out of all of your tzaddis, all of your trials and tribulations. Spiritually, materialistically, flying over the Katrila Ribbon and the Ribbon out of Golos, Bimheira, Biamenu, the Katrila Ribbon and the Ribbon now. Amen. Chaim, Chaim. That's the end. Also, the Chaim. Also, Selachayim, tonight is also the birthday of Baruch Shmuel ben Chana. Should have a complete refuah shleim, I'm with Hashem. In his eyes, should be able to see. Uh, should be a continuous nissim, I'm with Hashem. Selachayim for that. Selachayim, Selachayim. Selachayim, so... Uh, but Kuni, there was a story, there was, when I was in California, I asked you a question about... Uh, how, dealing with with challenges, and have you dealt with the uh, most recent challenge, at the uh, tragic challenge of the passing of your son, your son? And you show with me a story that happened with you with the Rebbe. Do you mind sharing it with us tonight? Okay. When I got notified. I'm asking Rabbi Yosef Nisitun, Tati, you're in the office, I have to talk to you. Came flying over with his car. He says, Tati, Tati, Tati. Tati, Tati, Tati. Crying. Tzemach, Tzemach. He told me what had happened. We went together to the house. He was still in the house. Ada, my God bless her, is wonderful Emerson. But all the strength that she needs to carry forward, his role and his legacy with the beautiful family, with the beautiful children, crying, sobbing. We did what we had to do. Dr. Pearl had seen him. It was an instant death, neurologically. He signed the death certificate. This is on a Friday. Kids are out of town. Come back to my office. Now I can afford to cry. I lie down on the couch. I start to cry. Then comes to mind the story of the Rebbe. Because the Rebbe leaves. Never leaves you alone. More so the embodiment of Rebbe Marash is an is Rebbe. My mother was very, very ill. She had gotten a gallbladder attack. She was under surgery. And she had a stress ulcer. My doctor calls me up. She said, Shlame, you could call the Rebbe. You can do that. You can. The Rebbe can save him. Tata, I'm calling right away. Call the 770, as usual, the Emma would be on the line. I'm called the cover, my runner would pick up and then connect the Emma. I started screaming. My mommy gave her life. 
for her only two children. That's all she could have. She got sick after I was born. She's under surgery. She has stress ulcer. The other one could save her. And I ichmon my Rebbe. I'm really pleading with the Rebbe to save her. All this comes to my mind, lying on the couch. And the Rebbe's answer, I get back. Friend my slain, but since then, Mr. Zichem Malabatashka, since when are you mixing in a field that has nothing to do with you? Then I knew to make plans after Shabbos to go for a funeral. So there was something the story in my mind to give me the color. And everything till today does not know. To go forward. We opened up 43 new institutions. It was 43 years of age. We opened up 43 new institutions, real institutions. The Chetchela River and River. New Shluchim. A message to all the Shluchim out there. Have to bring more young Shluchim near you. They have to knock on the doors. Knock, knock, knock. Excuse me, sir, are you Jewish? Find the Jews. I them to look to Echad, Echad, Basis, so only forward. We have gone way past the 43 already. That's the Chetchela River. Because you can't deal with such an obstacle. I bless all of you out there. You never ever should be put to such a test. Mechaim. Mechaim, so Katkhila uh, Riba, you know, like what do you know that they draw the line? Like I know you had some of us from the level of the Gaston, they said, you know, there's a famous story of you of all the, you know, the, the, the deaths that you have and going by the Rebbe and the Rebbe says, uh, you know, there's all a famous story. Uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Uh, but why do you draw the line? Where do you, where is it too much? Where is it too crazy? Where is it like, you know, it is the favorite kid in the Tigran? On one end, the Fidiki Rebbe once said, you know, the Rebbe is a, this certainly loves to go and take debts and do and do. And there's others that the Rebbe says, no, you know, do only whatever you're capable, like, you know, is, is it depend on people's personalities at Khatkhila Riba? Is it is it a limited era or what like uh you, for, for people that are here for, like me that are here on the phone and you wanted to do the Ira at Khila Riba, could you, you know, from 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 your experiences and also from what you heard from the Rebbe, uh, shed some light on this? Well, it's a very good question. I'm not sure which year it was. <laughs> But things are very, very bad. The economy crashed completely. And we owed $18 million. And the interest rates went up to 20%. Went up to 20%. And we tried. We opened up all these institutions. Shnas Hashivim. The Ketchila, the Ariba, they have wanted 71 new institutions. We took upon ourselves to open at least seven, ten percent. We pushed our Canadian to join, whatever. We ended up with 12, famous book that was published. And it was flying on the wings of the angels. Back to your David Yechidis, opened up the first one in Northern California. Then Diego, here, there, there, here, flying back and forth. Quarter of a million from this person we got miraculously. From this person, from this person, to this person. It was miraculous. On the wings of the angels, on the Rebbe's wings. So after we raised all this money, now comes again, uh, come back to the Rebbe, go into the Rebbe's room. I never asked the Rebbe for money. <laughs> We raised a lot of money, but we were two hundred thousand dollars behind. This is before the crash. We're talking about now, going back to Shnasa Shivim. We never wanted seventy-one new institutions. 
cometh to the heaven. And the Rebbe says, reads the tzatl, the way the Rebbe would read, the Rebbe would roll it on his holy fingers, the tzatl, the notes that you wrote. Not no mention about money. And the Rebbe looks up, what's this, well, what is it? The comes gelt, you owe money. The Rebbe asks the question, you have to answer, you go like this, no talking. Vivo, how much? And the Rebbe answers, $200,000. They go like this. Then I asked him a phone. I said, and the Abbot hastened, but when did you want to go? Morgan the free, come slam, he called again. So I wanted a $1,000. I'm going to give you $200,000. I thought I'd die right there in the room. The Abbot opens up the drawer, his holy hands, starts to count money. Goes like this to me with a big smile. The man hands me a package of bills. The Abbot says, here's $200,000. Here's $200,000. And the Abbot smiles and says, it's actually a thousand dollars. It's ten one hundred dollar bills. Cast if I could from yet the star for twenty six thousand. You could sell each hundred dollar bill for twenty thousand dollars. <clears throat> okay, I order a car ride. We pick me up at the airport. Bottle of uh, Crown Royal, the good old days, the quartz, the nice blue purple bag with a lacquer honey cake. Start to go to visit. I bought about them, those are the supporters. Go on to this one. What is it you want? Go on down now and may you rest in peace. He says, whatever you need from the Rebbe, you will get a blessing from the Rebbe. He says, what do you mean? I said, this bill is gonna cost you twenty thousand dollars You're gonna get it at least hundred times back. You guarantee me this? Is, of course I do. Would you put it in line? He said, of course. Here's your check. I would call up after every visit and speak to the Rebbe's secretary who then would correct me so that we would hear. And this is what I promised. This one wanted, even though he wasn't, quote, orthodox, but he was very Jewish, he wanted to see to it that his granddaughter should marry Jews because his son was way off the path. And they were going out with non-Jews. Fine, that's what he wanted to. This one needed in health. Three, I would call up the name, the mother's name. This is what I promised. This went on for about a week, maybe less. We raised the 200,000 bucks. Open revealed miracle, right? In one week. So you go forward and never want more institutions. Next year you come back, and by the way, before we go, there we get a call. There was a Holocaust survivor that we used to take care of. Same little right in the family. I'm not gonna go through the whole story. Make a very long story short. We needed two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. This man was 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 very, very poor. Holocaust survivor with numbers on his arm. We used, to, we used to get food to him. We didn't want to take any charity. So we let a challah get hard and say, take it home with you. And we can't give out the fish. We can let it get a little yellowish on top with all the preservatives. Take it to it doesn't go to the garbage. He dies. We have to bury him. I write that in my report going to Dana. Dana says, what's this, Schleiner? What's, what, what's now? That's some guilt. You need money? First of all, you tell for dear for a yard. What did I do for you last year? And Abba looks up. And Abba says, Do Sugizak Eden. You promised Jews. A women's cash must do Sugizak. On whose account did you make such promises? Process give on. What happened? Then I opened my big mouth. I went through story after story, miracle after miracle after miracle, miracle after miracle after miracle. You can promise. My father in the previous Rebbe, he'll pull me out. What do you think? 
You have to get them help. That is the helping. I'll give you money. Is it going to help you? I try not to think. That's not the place to think. Just to listen. I think mind goes. Why not? It worked last time. Why not? Thinking. They do tasks. If you think it'll help you, go to Rabbi Chodekov, my Segre, he'll give it to you. I knew right away this was the wrong address. That's what I knew. As I'm walking out, the Rebbe says, you wrote something about a will? I go like this. Because I wrote about that we had a will from the Holocaust survivors so we could borrow, so we would be able to bury him. Come back to Los Angeles, go to see us. The Finkelstein says, Rabbi, you want money, I'll give you. But I have, I don't need another bill. Second one said the same thing. So wait a second. Let's sit down and think this too. I said to Rabbi Levitansky on the show, review the Yechidus. He said, wait a second. The Rabbi said something about a Tzavar with Sammy. About a will. Let's go over. We have a will because he had come up to the office and said, in case I die, something went blank here. Came up to <clears throat> just shut down. It just died. Huh? It just died. Young one second, trying to figure out what's going on. Well, we're trying to figure it out and get Rabbi Kimi back on here. And I'll put this. He's coming back on in a sec, okay? Something just happened. He's coming right back on. Excellent. Are we on? Yes, you're back on, yeah. We're back on, okay. So you see the Sultan came again, right at the punchline to tell a, a miracle. So bang, the phone goes down again. But that's okay. So make your long story short. Are we, are we on, are we sure? Yes, yes, you're on. Okay. Okay. Make your long story short, we go to his apartment house where he lived, the five unit. Where he was one of the tenants. We go knocking on the door looking for the landlord. Making a long story short, they said, What do you mean, the landlord? I said, Yeah, I gotta get into Sammy's apartment. Sammy was the landlord. By the time we finished, that finished up many miracles in between. I'm not gonna go through it. That finished up with $565,000. That carried us through for a couple of years. Then we went forward knowing miracle after miracle. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be. We racked up $18 million worth of debt. And no way to handle it. 20% interest. Then they didn't make stuff up hanging. I believe it was then you would give them a special for hanging on the day of the passing the summer static, the day that Evan Marash became Evan. And the other speaks that there are those, when I say like a trailer, that they walk like a, it's a, there's a recording for brain brain, brain. that they walk like 120 year old people walk. That's their jumping over obstacles. There was one that jumped so high, who knows wherever he will land. And Evan's punchline was 
It has to be the Khatkhila River, or else the Toyu became the Tikkun. You have to have the very, very wild, very, very wild lights of Tohu. Wild lights, incredible lights, incredible power. It has to be the Kalim the Tikkun. It has to be in vessels of Tikkun, something that has some connection to reality. So you have to jump over, but not jump over without knowing where you're going to land. And then the other promised everything would be paid back since he worked on since he did it. And everything will be, will be paid back. And that was ended up with a miracle with Amin Weinberg many years later, after going through all of this, where we got $21 million. Ran around paying off everybody will be hold up, writing checks, and I saw him by Levitin, the Shriach in, in Seattle, drove me in the car then, went from place to place with a checkbook, and then went off after his great, great victory, and ran off to go back to Russia for a vacation to continue the battle for his work. So you ask, how do you figure this out? It has to be heard of Satoyu became the Tikkun. If you can't figure it out, I think you have to sit with your Rav or a few very, very good people and say, okay, this is my position. I want to jump over the obstacles. I want to do something wild, but I don't want to jump to the moon where I'll fall down on my head. That's how you have to judge it. And each person has to judge it that way. And separate from that, and even more important, after getting their advice, is to communicate with the Rebbe. Go to the oil. I have this project. Rebbe, give me the inspiration what to do. Go to the oil. If you don't get the answer there at the oil, you walk out, watch the television screen, and you'll see miraculously the Rebbe talking, and you'll find out that the Rebbe's talking to you something that you relate to directly to what you asked them. There's another very, very, very valid way of communication. That's after you talk to Yididim Mevinim, friends, or you have an Anola that you talk to, or whatever else it is. Then you go to the mikveh, you, you concentrate very strongly, you write a letter to the Rebbe, you put it in the Rebbe's holy writings, letters, and then go to your Mashpia to help you or, you, or, if, or yourself, if you can understand it, but don't go into shopping. If you don't like this answer, let me do it again and again until I find what I want. Only if you put yourself in that position, that's my suggestion how to go forward. And if there's anything that I can be helpful with, I have many, <laughs> many lessons I've taken to tell you. And I've always seen to it, even before the last crash, that. You have a table of three legs. Don't ever go on one thing, three legs to the table, like we did before and before the crash. We had a $25 million estate from now. We had bonds we were going to issue. We had our usual ways of raising money, three legs. And then the way it was meant to be, we never got there on our estate. We lost it in court, whatever it is, it is. That cost me 25 million bucks. In which we were sure we were going to get, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then bonds came to nothing with the collapse, the financial collapse. And that's when we hit uh, the dark times that we've been living through over these years. But thank God we've made it through because we believe. We go like a Tchila River and a river. But that's the way I, I see it. So how do, you, how do you go through your day to day, mundane, day to day activities being inspired? with the Katrila River. So I've been to your office and noticed that you uh, watch almost daily Rebbe's videos. That's correct. Not only I watch them daily, first of all, I start the morning after saying brachas. I start the morning. One second, let me get it. I'll be able to play it for you. One second. I sit down at the table before. One second. No. Okay. One second. First fake voice message. Sent Monday, June 
29 at 9.09 p.m. from 3102086265. Duration 1 minute 20 seconds. That's what I listen to, the shorter part of the end. I listen to every single morning as we start the day. There are videos, incredible, incredible videos. First of all, we have the videos in our own heads, inculcated, those of us who were fortunate enough to have been with the face to face. 
have videos in our heads. Bring them back. It's all stored up in your brains. And those, and all of us that need more, they're all the living Torahs, it's all the beautiful videos that there are, the thundering voices that there are on the internet. That's all from Tzivus Hashem. Three or four beautiful videos you watch and you see. And that's what you got to say. And you got to talk to him. Talk to them. Ever. I really need your help to make it through the day. I really, really do. I need your help to make it through the hour. I need your help to make it through the minute. Please help me. Just please, please help me. And that strengthens your scashes. And when you go to put on film with a yid, or you call another yid, you know, or you're really having a rough day, you're really down, you know what to do? Whack! Get on the phone. Get another five yid to put on film. Oh, you hit me like this? Whack! That's what you got to do. It's the only way you can do it. There is no other, other answer. And that's what it is. Hey, do Hashem, ki tei, ki lilavam, az lei. Hey, do Hashem, ki tei, ki lilavam, az lei. Tatinu, tatinu, shteish adanti. The coming beneath so bad, my dear. Tatting, no tatting, no rattling. Be coming so bad, my dear. Tatting, no tatting, no rattling. Coming so bad, my dear. Shliach, my king. Du darfst doch verstehen, ich bin von dir nicht weg, dir nicht gelost allein. Wo du stehst und wo du gehst, bin ich doch zusammen mit dir. Wo du stehst und wo du gehst, bin ich doch zusammen mit dir. Toll, wenn du kommst und du stehst bei mein Tier. Du stehst nicht allein, ich steh doch mit dir. Wenn du auf dein Schlichtes gehst, du warst von dem Team. Geh ich doch zusammen mit dir. Wenn du auf dein Schlichtes gehst, du warst von dem Team. Geh doch zusammen mit dir. Tod ihr der Reine, als was ich kenne. Mach das Seil von der Gaus, verbrennt ihre Welt. Und ihr malt mein Schlichach, wenn ich dich. So wie weiß er mich so hasch, hasch li, schieß dich. Ihr malt mein Schlichach, wenn ich dich. So wie weiß er mich so hasch, hasch li, schieß dich. Bin ich schon gewohnt, was schaffe von der Welt. Give us the cake, because it is on the deal. Bring the shell on, dear Betsy, by dear. Come, 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 help she me. You bring the shell on, dear Betsy, by dear. Come, come, help she me. That's the answer. More videos, more chitas, more rambam. More scholarships to the Rebbe, more learning the Rebbe Sikhs, my mother. You have this incredible, incredible site. I don't even know what it's called. But I know the telephone number 718-569-7700. 718-569-7700. Where you have a spare moment. Plug in. It says to you, what is it you want? You get the first number, you get five, which, which is Fabrengans. Then they ask you what month of the year. This month you had seven, and they ask you which day. And you plug in the day and listen to them talking to you on the phone, the sikhs of that day, the same power of that day. That's what I can suggest. 
Thank you very much. Also, uh, to note, I know that as much as, uh, like you said, with the kids, to, to mention the Kalim, the Tikkun, and you have mentioned uh, in the past to me that, you know, that, that also you have to make sure to keep your uh, body healthy, eat well, sleep well, because every day is like a battle to be Mashiach, so be a goof. It's, That's for sure. It's not a contradiction to look at Chila Ariba. That's for sure. That's for sure. And that's how we go forward. It's like I could sit here all night telling you stories. I don't know what I don't know what the time schedule is. There's no schedule. So Lachaim, uh, Lachaim, Shvayach. Thank you very much for this uh, very inspirational Katchila Riba for bringing. Uh, if anybody has any questions, you can un- un- unmute yourself and ask whatever questions uh, you want of Rabbi Kinnan. And uh, I want to wish you uh, at Atzlocha, continuous Atzlocha in uh, in the Katkila River, in uh, every way possible. And uh, for you, for your Rabbitson, for your Chipocha, for the Chabad of California, and only Mechayel uh, Chayel, a great nation. Chaim. And the Rabbit says every year has a current Chabracha. I dabbed at the man, Michelin, I dabbed out of the bundle. I saw her with Solomon Molaham. I called the Norwish for Lacha. Now they're part of the Lacha with Honeka. These are the Pablachas of Solomon, some of Shmiab and Sophan Niav Rachim. They wish you should give him, Mr. Shem. We shall have the ever immediately come to take us out of Golos. We should have the four slime with all that we need them. But the medium was Blumelay and many, many more that need them. And may Hashem should take us, keep us safe from his career. Bizarre situation that we have with this plane, and the Abishu should give us all the money. Because when the Abishu gives us the money, we show them when we have it, we know what to do with it. You're talk, talking about money, talking about money, talking about uh, fundraising. You know, uh, you know, you have a lot of uh, stories, a lot of stories about you uh, going fundraising and um, uh, people just trying to give small amounts. They said, no, give a big amount, b- bigger amount. Like, the rabbit talks about, I heard once a sikh from the rabbit, the rabbit said, you have to go and knock on the table and said, we need this, you know, we need this. So in today's modern world or whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's how, how do you do like a tchila, ribba, and even from the areas that turn can the tikkun when you do fundraising? Then on one end you have to, uh, you know, you can knock on the table and, you know, what, when this knocking on the table and, Thinking being and asking being applies, and when is not? Like, when the, how do you uh, measure that? Well, each case and each personality of the street that is doing it is different. Personality as well of the person you're going to. Different people react to different ways. So, you have to know first of all, I wouldn't come to a person the first time that you see him asking for money. First thing I would do, I would get down to a new person. But after you know a person for a while, if you don't ask, you don't get it. It's as simple as that. You don't ask, you don't get it. So you have to come with a specific project that you have in mind. You have to lay it out. First of all, everybody has to make sure they have full financial transparency. Everybody has to be very, very sure to do everything in accordance to the laws of Aloha in accordance to the laws of the United States of America. So in Ahmad al Islam, we should not have any Tzoros and Chil Hashem. Everybody should have a simple financial statement of what's going on in your organization. So a person says, okay, show me what you want. What have you been doing till now? If it's a, if it's a building campaign, you lock it up first for, for a, a longer escrow, and then go to the biggest guy and say, you know something? We've been knowing each other for years. Thank God, God's been good to you. You've been very good to us. I need a new Chabad house now. Let me show you a video, which we didn't have when I went out, of this beautiful building. I need you to help me. Your name on the outside would be something for you forever and ever. For your whole family to look at many, many years. I can't afford $5 million. Well, so why not do the synagogue for a million? Rabbi, I'm going to give you $100,000 and ask you to leave. Then, 
you look at him in the eye and you tell him, Sam, I have to fulfill my responsibility. I have to fulfill my responsibility. My responsibility, if God wanted, I would buy a lottery ticket and I would win $100 million. With Rebbe's blessings, I could do it. But that's not what the Rebbe wants from us. That's not what God wants from us. God wants me to open my heart to talk to your heart and tell you, you know something? I am here to help your soul. We all have an ongoing battle within ourselves. The battle for the good, the battle for the not good. The battle for the good says, write my big check. Battle for the not good says, 100 bucks, let him go. What's, what is he coming to waste my time? Now, I have the same two forces in me. But when it comes to taking money from you, Sam, it's only my good force and your good force against one force of evil that you have in your heart. Because my force of evil doesn't mind if you give money. So therefore, I'm here today to really help you. If not, I wouldn't be here. Rabbi, I still believe that 100 bucks is what I'm going to give you. Well, Sam, I want to tell you something. I don't want to do that to you because you're a wonderful friend and I know you have all these years. But that's not what I came here for. I want you to think over very well what I said. And let me leave you with a story. I walked into Lester Finkelstein, I was my chairman of the board, and one day he gave us millions of dollars. His nose was down to the ground. And he said, I said, well, Lester, what's the matter? He said, my horse lost the Preakness. Preakness is a very famous race. A horse race, at least was years ago. The horse lost it by a nose. I said, you, Lester Finkelstein, are sitting like this in your office because your horse lost a race by a nose? Come on, you're Lester Finkelstein. What are you talking about? He says, Rabbi, let me give you an example so you'll understand. You come to me. Say, Mr. Finkelstein, I'd like to have $10 million. I say, what do you want it for? And I explain, you explain. I say, okay, it's a good idea. How do I make the check payable to? Then those years was friends of Lubavitch. Friends of Lubavitch. How do you spell that? Lubavitch, okay. He writes the exact amount on the check. He says, I write it on the check, $10 million. I say to you, what's the date? Tell him September 1st, write the date. And as I begin to sign the check, I put my hand on the, on the pen, I put my hand down to write Lester Finkelstein, and I drop dead. That's what's called losing a horse by a race, by a nose, horse race by a nose. Think about that story. God bless you. With long, healthy, and happy years, I love you just the same. It's a test that God is testing you. I'm trying to help you make it through. God bless you. That's what I would do. That was that was put very wonderfully. I, I, there's someone particularly I have to do it with, with that amount that you mentioned. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I guess in five of them, Rezal should be healthy and they should... Uh... Amen. With uh, with this, Shkoyach. Anyone else have any questions? Please unmute yourself. Do you want to know when to go down the Yeah, all right, we'll go down the now. Shkoyach, thank you very much. Yeah, 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 Good I am. I am. Thank you. I am. 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 His baby and everything, and his eyes. Amen. Amen.
Saygı Zond. Maksimum Teyvan. Gagutyan Tetri, Tetri Gariba. 